Hi, in this video I'd like to demonstrate a new package I've released called Laravel Module Generator and it's to go alongside a package called Laravel Modules which allows you to generate mo module structure uh, for a Laravel application. So if you're familiar with that package this is to go alongside that so what this package allows you to do is generate modules that are more feature rich than what a standard module on the box would be. So think of it as a full blown sort of crud module so that's already got the create the edit and all migrations and uh, all, all things like that in place but we just with placeholders rather than the real values so then you can actually do like a, a mass find and replace essentially on that module to get like a starter uh, to really um, speed up your process when you're building a new module probably easier if I just kind of show you show you the process uh, and then we can go through it from there. So first of all, I'm just going to quickly install the module. While that's running, I also want to um, publish the stubs files. Also, it'll, it'll publish the com config file. And in the config file, it contains the paths and ignore files. So in the path, it tells that where the path is, where the stubs are going to be located. So that's going to be located in the stub directory. And in stub directory, it will point to a module generator folder. And in there is where you've got your actual stubs. And we've got this ignore files. And that's just to, to ignore any file that we don't want to be renamed. Because essentially what this is going to do is do a mass find and replace on all the file names and the content of anything, everything that's in, in this stubs directory. Okay, so now we, we've published that. Um, in terms of using it, it's, what you need to do is run a PHP as a um, uh, module module build and then you give it the name of the module you want to do and then what happens then is it takes a copy of that module and it looks for any any of these placeholders and replaces them with the name of the module that you provided so in, in this case if we create a module called contact it found module and it replace it with with contacts likewise if it, if it found model then it would replace it with contact as a single version of the contacts okay so now we've, we've got that installed and we've got that published. Uh, we've got our stubs file. So this is just an example of how to, how to you can design a, a module structure. Uh, you absolutely should change this to suit your own application. Uh, so this isn't going to, this quite often won't match the structures that you're using. Uh, so for instance, if you open up a controller file, is when we see we've got all these placeholders in place, and it's it's admittedly it's not very easy to read. But once you get used to that, these just become placeholders. And when it the the actual file that is generated is just a standard looking looking file. I'm just know it's a mistake in here, so that needs to be patching it, not not get for the example I'm about to show you. So basically, where you've got like the controller name. So rather than having the module there, it would actually have the name or that you provide to that. So it's probably easy if I give a quick demonstration of that process. So I'm going to create, create a new module by saying module build. Uh, and then I'll create a module called post. And that's telling me it's created a starter, mo a starter post module and that's generated successfully. So if I look inside my modules directory, I've now got a post folder. And if you look inside the controller, you can see this looks a lot cleaner than the file that we was just in. So now we can see we've got the right namespace. It's got the right name for the model, for the module and for the model and for the views and the variables. They've all been replaced with that, that structure. Okay, so the other thing it does is because we've got a database, um, so we've got a migration in in this in the stub file. So in the database folder, we've got a migration, and we've got this create module table. Well, that's actually getting replaced with the name of the module, and because it's a migration, it also it gets prefixed with a timestamp, so it's in the right format as a migration should be. And then we can see here it's created the actual table structure for us. So now that we've actually built, we've actually generated this post table, we can actually um, run it. So we've got, as a sample, we've got a test folder. And if I try and run that now, it shouldn't actually run. All, all six tests fail. And the reason for that is because the module isn't enabled, so it can't actually run. 
So if I just say module enable pose. Okay, and then I run my test again. Now all, now all six of them pass in. And this is just some sample tests using pest PHP. I say this entire module structure is it's not fixed in place. It's you can you, have, you can change this in any way that you want. It's just a, an example to get started with. Uh, so now that that's running, if I come back to my application and if I go to uh, Purse, okay. So now it doesn't run in the application because the database doesn't yet exist. Um, the table doesn't exist, so I just need to run the migrate script. So now that's been migrated for refresh. Now we actually see it running. So as this is an example, the actual style of it doesn't really fit with this application, uh, but that's that's to be expected because the actual star files wasn't really designed with this demo in mind because it's just a stars file. So that's that's absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is just quickly change this so it looks like this does. And I can show you that process. So I'll close all these down. In fact, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete, yeah, I'll delete the post one for now, because I'll, I'll regenerate the post module in a moment. So if I open up the series module, and I've been looking inside the resources views, and look inside, basically grab the index file, and if I, I just want to replace that inside of my template. And then everywhere we've got serials, I just want to replace this with my placeholder. So module, which would be the name of the module. And in this case, it's the same thing, but I want it in lowercase. So I'll say module without a capital M. And in this case, I want to say model, because I just want it to be like the singular version of the, the name. And there's a few cases where lowercase serials exist, so I'll just do replace it in a few places. So that will, that will replace it with the name of the module. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else missing from there. Okay, so that's that one file done. And I'll quickly do the create because there's not much on these. So in this particular case, I don't have these fields, so I'll change that. So I'll, the actual sample files only has a name because it's just designed to keep be that simple. So I'll say model because I want that to be the singular version. Here that will be module. And that's it actually. And then if we look at the edit page, uh, we'll just do the same process again. In this case there's zero in a few places. So it needs to have the variable first, and then we can put the brackets in. And in this case, I want model because I want the singular version of this. Here we can say module. Okay, so I think that that will do. So if we close all those files down, and now we'll build build the module again. I'll do the purse, come back to the page, and we'll change this to purse. So now we've got our purse page in place, and click on add purse. Let's just try this out. That's added a purse, I can edit. Update. So that's that's one, one more job. So here's where, now we've done that initial setup, here's where it gets interesting. So let's create another module, let's call one called Quotes. Uh, let's enable that one. And let's migrate the database. Okay, well let's just complain because I've already got a post migration running. So let's just Migrate just a single uh, the, the that particular module itself. So I'll say module migrate, and then we'll give it the name of the module what we want to migrate, which I've already forgotten what I called it. Quotes. 
right so that's now run okay so if i run for here now and then go to go to quotes we've got another we've got another module so i've got a navigation file that lists this, this menu so if i quickly go to the navigation file and i'll add them both into here So if I come back, and it's a bit, they are, admittedly, they are both the same, but we see they are independent from each other. And it's the, the whole point of this is a, it's a starting point, it's not the end result. So from the starting point, we've got we've got two modules generated. And if we wanted to create another module, so contacts, and we'll enable that one as well and we'll we'll see that particular table All right and we'll add that to our file as well come back through and now we've got a contact section So we've got three separate modules running. So once you've set up that base structure, anything you've got in that module kind of works. So the way I would recommend you do this is you would first build a, mo a module yourself. So you've got a full module working the way that you want it to. And then replace the module, essentially put the, put the files into this folder structure. And then just replace like in a earlier. Uh, when I was going through through these, anywhere where you've got the actual name of, like the unique name for that section that you're in, just replace it with a placeholder. So there's a couple of areas where you might want to do something slightly different. Uh, so for instance, if I go back to back to the README file, uh, so there's various placeholders you can use, and within the side of the file contents themselves. Uh, these are kind of self-explanatory. We've got module, and it's up a, start with a capital or lowercase, and same for model. But then we've got these two variants at the bottom, and we've got one that ends with an underscore. And what that will do is it'll actually put an underscore in between words. So if you create a name such as um, purchase order, uh, when you're putting through, if you want, you've got a capital in the, you know, it's like two kind of words. And what it will do then is, for like any migrations. Uh, when you when you put in fact i'll just show you inside the migration what you want to do here is you want to put an underscore and that way if you ever do use multiple words it will know to separate them with an underscore see so migrations work the way they should do likewise if you need anything separate with a hyphen then you can put a hyphen in and it will it will do the same thing so you've got this placeholders so on, on the surface it's, it's pretty simple you you put these placeholders in where you want files to be and it, it gets replaced when you run it. Same with for file names. One caveat is there's a models directory and in the base template, I'm using entities. And the reason for that is because otherwise, when I generate a module, because it kind of does it on mass, it would find that keyword of models and it would, re a model, and it would replace it. So with the name of the module you can, being created. So if you're creating a contact module, that would say contacts, which is not what you want. You want that to be, be models. So instead, you call it entities, and then when it generates, that will just get replaced to be models instead. And it just stops that, that from happening, really. Uh, so the, yeah, it's really useful, this, because you can essentially go through, even when it's the providers, anywhere where you've got the names, just put these placeholders in place. And then once you've set up a module with all your place, placeholders in place, you can build modules incredibly fast. And then once you've built your modules, it's, that's just your starting point. At that point, then you can go through, like in this case, I could go through to the migrations file, I could add, add more fields to it, add more fields to the factory. Or if I needed to seed it, I could go through the seed file, add things, there same with the model and go for the model add whatever i need to add through to there same with your tests and your routes the whole point is it's just a starting point to get started uh, that really helps you speed up your process so it used to be where i would create a, a, a command to do this where i think i might even have it on this project 
yeah, so I've got I've got this command. That's it kind of does the same thing. Uh, so what this does is you say make module, you give it a name of the module, and it will go through. If I come down. So here's where we're saying that the, the, the path. So it's looking in the subfolder for a particular folder, and it's going to look inside the, that path, uh, and then it's going to go through the files. And so here it's going to replace any contents that's in the, these files. And then for this section, it, it's going to rename like this file to um, this file. And you've got to put all these placeholders in in here itself. And while this works really well, it's it's not very nice to do it this way because you you're looking at the file structure uh, the file is in like this format but you're not actually looking in the the real files um uh, what i prefer about doing it this way is you can see the structure how it's actually going to be and it put in the actual the right file names so i've got down to the stubs so you can see the, the, what the file names are going to be or if you're looking inside of an actual file like um migration or whatever you can put your placeholders where it's going to be so it's as real world as you can really get before actually writing it all manually uh, so i do prefer the, this approach uh, i'm working on um, an admin theme at the moment and uh, this is going to be bundled in with that and it's going to be a lot uh, it's going to have a lot more out of the box because it's the module there to do a lot more than what this example does uh, but yeah it's I think it's really useful. Give it a try. See what you think to it. It, it might work re really well for you.